Now, with the vaccines that we have used, this problem is even worse because these vac vaccines, or I should say so-called vaccines, they aren't vaccines. And I was convinced that that was not an important issue. Lots of people were upset by the redefinition of the term vaccine. I wasn't convinced it was an important issue. I have switched sides on this. I now think the definition is vitally important and we're beginning to see why. But in any case, these... But we should but clarify that. Why do you think it is not a vaccine? Well, it's not a vaccine for a number of different reasons. The primary reason is that it does not create immunity to the pathogen, right? So... Okay, but so then is a flu vaccine a, fl a vaccine? It, it depends. I would like to know more about how well flu vaccines actually work, right? Now that we've seen all of this theater around safe and effective, I am now in a very cautious position with respect to what I thought I knew about the effectiveness of other so-called vaccines. But in the case of the, the COVID vaccines, there, there are really um, two issues. One, it doesn't produce immunity to catching the disease or transmitting it. So it's not a vaccine by that metric. It just produces antibodies. Well, I wouldn't say it just produces antibodies. I would say we don't really know. The, the public discussion has focused on antibodies, but I think that's because the public knows what an antibody is, mm. right? So the, the deeper discussion is, well, what is the interplay between antibodies and T cells, which don't make antibodies? And we don't know the answer to that. But fundamentally, these so-called vaccines, they enter your cells and they turn your cells into a vaccine factory at best. That's what they do. That's a very different technology. And so th the reason that I now think that the question of whether or not it is or is not a vaccine uh, is important is that effectively all of us normal folk had a belief that vaccines, yeah, it's a complicated thing, but it's a pretty elegant uh, medical intervention. And in general, they're pretty safe. They have very low levels of side effects and they're basically worth it. It's a good deal, right? You just get a little injection and you have an immunity to some disease that you have never seen before. Isn't that marvelous? And I still feel this way about the fundamental technology. But the fact is, this is actually um, a far less certain than we understood. It's a more radical intervention than we commonly understand. And in this case, what they've done is they've smuggled in a really, truly, radically new technology, and they caused us all not to worry about it very much by using the term vaccine, right? Mm. If they had said, uh, all right, we've got this pandemic, and uh, in order to uh, prevent it from spreading, we're going to have everybody take gene therapy, everybody would have said, what? Gene therapy? Is that safe? Right. Mm. Um, so the point is, by we had a category and it was called vaccine. And we all thought, you know, there are some crazy folks who are worried about vaccines, but in general, it's safe. So if something carries that label, it's probably safe, too. And this is actually what activated Heather and me when the pandemic began. And then, you know, we started trying to unpack what we were hearing about it just to translate the biology into English for people. And then we, you know, the vaccines were uh, on the horizon and we were initially very hopeful. We thought, oh, well, maybe, maybe that's an answer. Um, but then they said the vaccines, you know, the testing tells us that these things are highly effective and very safe. And we didn't know anything about effectiveness at that point. In fact, I'm a little embarrassed to have taken them at their word. Um, but the claim that they were safe didn't make a whit of sense. They couldn't possibly know, right? And the reason that they couldn't possibly know is that the word safe, if you say that something is safe, you are not saying um, that it's harmless. You are saying you know it doesn't carry any risk, right? If you, if you get in your car drunk one day and you drive home, right? Well, there was no harm. It was harmless, but it wasn't safe, mm -hmm. right? So when they said these things are safe, the answer is, well, how would you know that? You've only been injecting them into people for months. You don't know what happens five years down the road. It can't be safe, right? You can tell us you don't know any harms of any harms yet, but you can't say it's safe. And so that alarmed us because we were immediately being told, here's a new technology. 
Heather and I looked at the new technology, and it's like, oh, that's not a minor change. That's a radical departure from the way a vaccine. Um, and this is you as a biologist examining this. Yep. Heather and me as a biologist, and I have a little background in uh, immunology. And Heather so, is a biologist as well. Absolutely. We're evolutionary yeah. biologists. Yeah. So anyway, we looked at these technologies and thought, wow, you are intervening in a nested series of complex systems in a way that you can't possibly predict the outcome. You just couldn't know at that point. And so that caused us to dig deeper, which got us in more and more trouble and actually landed us uh, at Garrett Vandenbosch's work pretty quickly, right, which introduced a whole new uh, set of questions, you know, beyond the question of how safe is this for the individual. The question is, well, what does this vaccination program mean for the pandemic itself, right? And what he said which there was no evidence that it was taking place at the time. But what he said is, look, if you vaccinate into a pandemic and you do so broadly across the population, you're going to drive the evolution of variants, right? You are going to create an evolutionary arms race and you are going to cause the number of variants to proliferate. And, you know, at the time I couldn't say for sure that he was right. But what I could say was that he was making evolutionary sense. There was nothing terribly complex about his argument, and it was robust. And I think now we are seeing, not only have we seen that proliferation of variants, but we are now seeing the grudging acceptance that that's what's happened in places like uh, the Washington Post. Just seeing it in the front of the world. 